So, all right. Well, uh, I don't know if you guys have a, you know, how you guys want to start this off, yeah. like quote unquote officially, but we're already I'll, recording, right? So we, we're already recording, but I, I can kick it off if you guys are ready. Are we all ready for this? Sure. Why not? Why, think so. not? why not? All right. Well, so uh, welcome back to everybody who, who's tuning in. This is uh, now episode number 36 of the Flatiron Syndicate Motorsports Podcast. And uh, to anybody that's listening or especially watching, we have got some special guests with us again. We are very excited uh, to have with us the guys from Professional Awesome on the podcast today uh, so that we could pick their brains and, and have a chat with them. So we've got, uh, we have Devin, we have Hayden, we have Mike, we have Dan. Um, and I, so maybe, I don't know, one of you guys, uh, if you want to kind of tell us first, maybe just a little bit about what you guys do as Professional Awesome, just for anybody that, that is, is watching and listening that might not be familiar with, with you guys and what you've done to this point. Get yeah. it, Mike? Yeah. yeah Mike. All right. Yeah. So, so um, here at Professional Awesome, what we primarily do, we're a, we're a, we're well known as this time attack team. We have an unlimited car. We got a limited car, uh, uh, unlimited Evo. We got a limited um, S2000. We've got a couple other cars also that we run as well, but um, primarily known as a time attack team, but then we, we branched out and we do engineering consulting. Um, we're known for our uh, concept of DIY downforce, which means, you know, you make downforce DIY arrow. So um, we have a lot of products uh, that we sell on our website, professionalawesome.com. And then we also uh, have basically we do engineering consulting. So if you need anything on your car, you've got some issue. Honestly, it doesn't have to be relegated just to arrow or suspension. Those are our two main bread and butters, but we do basically anything. So if you have a problem with the car in, in any way and you want uh, someone to help consult, like, hey, I, I have something wrong with my cooling system. I have something wrong with my suspension. I have something wrong. I want to make more downforce. I, this, that, and the other thing. The car is doing something funny. That's really what we we're good at. We'll we'll take a holistic look at the car and then we'll we'll try to make suggestions that we think are the best cost, you know, the best cost driver that would give you the most performance for the cost. So um, yeah, primarily engineering consulting. We help, you know, basically we help you go faster in any way we can um, under the umbrella. So. Nice. Hey, I'll, I'll, oh, go sorry. I'll, I'll head on to Mike. This is Dan here. Um, the, the one thing I think we specialize in as well is, is taking information and disseminating it. Um, in an easy to sure. understand way, and also uh, in a way that's cost effective that a lot of other motorsports companies don't do. So uh, our big goal is making people as fast as possible for as little money as possible and, and going after that low hanging fruit that people don't even know exists. Sure. Yeah. Being, being yep. as efficient as possible with the build, which, right. which has a lot of benefits, you know, cost being one of them, but just like how effective can you make, uh, can you yeah can you long, i mean the cost make a change yeah cost longevity you know in, in terms of actual operating cost you'll you know you'll actually drive it more because you have less headaches i mean that's the biggest thing if you know most people know that it's the avalanche right it's the avalanche is why you stop racing your car is because it's become too expensive now and that's the complaint yeah, right it's it's too much getting prepared it's too much cost for tires it's too much cost for the for the um consumables um it's too yeah. hard to get to the track things are un, not reliable anymore and that's the things that we try to help with to kind of focus on the reliability side on the cost side and make the car as fast as possible um for that cost right and get the most co uh, cost benefit analysis out of it so that you continue to race because otherwise you get burned out and that's what happens to a lot of guys especially in the upper end Absolutely. Is, is that kind of, was, was that mentality what kind of inspired you guys to, to found Professional Awesome is to, you're, you're, you're in, you built these cars, you're making these cars, you're going out there, but you're learning these lessons and you're realizing that there, there's one way to do it, but then there's a better way to do it so that you can actually enjoy getting out to the track and, and running the cars more and then just trying to kind of like get that, get that school of thought out there to more people. When, when we first started, it, it honestly, um, it was about hanging out with our buds, having a good time. And then what we would learn was that we would be like everyone else. You know, you go online, you, you research, you know, how do I do this with my car? How do I do that with my car? And we found that the information out there is just unreliable. Um, it, it wasn't consistent. It, it wasn't based in a fact or, or data driven. And so we were all... Um, poor young dudes yeah. that, that <laughs> took combined all of our resources to, to race and challenge ourselves. And then we found that um, I kind of our inherent like base knowledge, our inherent methodology of how we raced 
was was really successful working well together and it kind of flew in the face of some of the um, um, practices that other people had have always followed and so you know professional awesome the name is tongue-in-cheek we're, we're here to have a good time we talk about data and and math and engineering all the time but we're not sticking the muds either you know we're goofing around um we're, we're having a good time while we do it and what we found was you could really combine the data having fun um looking at things from a different lens a different perspective that most people do and you can go really fast kind of really you know at least you know with our efforts combined it, we got fast really quickly and easily and then it's like all right i wish i knew that stuff when i was first right, getting yeah. started how yeah. do we mm -hmm. how do we get that out into the community because for us um the joy is is competition and hanging out with our friends and stuff like that and if if us giving out information us helping other people makes the community grow then like we're all for it right absolutely and, well, and yeah dan's got a great point is that it's funny because he says he, we disseminate try to disseminate the information in the engineering to make it more readily uh you know consumable and and i fully admit that when i go on a, a extra angry engineering rant i get pretty high level and dan and the rest of the guys write the articles i don't really write the articles i have a little bit like dan will send them and say hey does this is this what you know the engineering concepts that we're going for but it's that ability to work as a team and disseminate some of that information in a consumable fashion that i think has been a really big driver in the success for sure well and that's i mean we found you through the products and through through the information through through your guys putting together the podcast and the articles. That's, that's how we found you. Um, and so Actually, it, it's I definitely working. I found you from the, uh, the links to basically where you could get the uh, Illumilite in every state. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's a big oh. one. It's, it's, it's huge. I mean, it's just one of those things of like, where the hell do I get this stuff? Aha. These guys will tell you exactly where. Yeah. And, and we worked with the, you know, we work with Laminators Inc. is the company that makes that. And we worked with them to get every distributor that was on their list so that we could disseminate that knowledge. Because honestly, that is a hugely asked question. And so Dan's like, we should put that on the website. I was like, let's do that. And then and it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's yeah. such a great idea. Thank, Thank you. We, we keep yeah. that updated because some of that stuff, the information from laminators wasn't accurate, we found out. Right. And so yeah. our customers or, or our readers, maybe they're not even our customers, will, you know, shoot us an email or shoot us a comment or whatever. And if you see that, if there's something wrong or, you know, there's somebody else that sells it, let me know. I'll put it on there. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Well, and what I love is what you're saying is about getting the information out there. And it's something that, you know, as we were kind of talking, kind of getting to know each other before we started this, that's something that we try to do as well. And I think that that's like uh, motorsports now or people that, are, people that are getting into motorsports now. If you tap into it, there is, there is such an information resource out there if you know where to look or if you can right. if you find somebody that, that is coming at, uh, you know, participating in, in motorsport in this way. There, there's a lot more transparency now and good information now than there has been before there's still a lot of bad information but there if you can mm -hmm. sift through that there's more good information than there ever has been before for sure yeah and i would agree with that i think i think it, like anything else in life it's hard to um wade through it and figure out where good information comes from so we take a lot of pride in making sure that we're giving the best information possible and and, you know, we'll fully admit when, you know, obviously we have partners that we deal with, but we, we try to deal with only partners that we trust and such so that we're fully admitting, you know, hey, we're working with these people, but we trust them. And we would buy, you know what I mean? We use this stuff on our own car. We pay full price, all that stuff for it. And that's the thing. It's like we want to be on the up and up as much as possible so you can trust what we say. That's it's really important that we have that integrity so and that you trust our information. Acknowledge Absolutely. our shortcomings, too. Yeah, we're, we're not the smartest people in the world at all. Oh, no. <laughs> No, I don't. <laughs> but I don't know. We're, guys we're pretty, I, dis I disagree. I, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, Mike's the smartest person. The rest of us are just writing his coattails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's well, bad. the rest of you are among good company then. I just, I just wow. ride the mic train. That's oh god. That's <laughs> I got. This is starting to sound like something we shouldn't be doing. I mean, I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm just curious what. Uh, did you guys have a similar background, uh, like, as, or or were you all kind of like in the same like 
location or did you just all kind of like get <laughs> Mike together and just, I share a very similar background yeah okay. Hayden, Hayden and I do so the, the start of professional awesome is basically Dan and I lived together I was in college he was not um, okay. that, that's a whole background story that's, I got kicked out of my house and yeah and me he, in. he called no and that's okay. literally the background story it's kind of fun anyway <laughs> so he started living with me and then um, one day he there was a time attack event in Chicago we lived at Purdue so it was West Lafayette Indiana so about three hours two and a half hours away and there was a, a time attack event and Dan's like I'd like to do this we, we've been doing autocrosses track days of ginger men things like that but then he's like i'd like to do this and i'm like i don't even know what this is man and he's like you just set lap times and i'm like okay i don't get how this is different but sure so we went and did it and it was a lot of fun and so then we got a couple of other people involved and then that's where the main components started jumping on originally like grant he um he won't do podcasts for some reason we try to keep trying to convince him um but grant jumped on and then after that, we, there was also another gentleman named Alec, who was also very similar to my background in engineering at Purdue. And then after that, uh, uh, Devin, we had met at the track. And I was always impressed by Devin's hand skills. I always told him that. Like, I'm always impressed that he's got a lot of hand skill, right? Like, he's able to, to manhandle a car. I mean, half of the pictures of, it, uh, of him are off track sliding into something. But he never crashes for real, which is really <laughs> the impressive part, right? That's the and key. So, there you that go. The key. So, yes. so I was impressed by his driving, but I found that for me, I didn't think that he had a, uh, obviously he didn't have a lot of support around him. He was a one man band. Sometimes his dad would come along. So I was like, you know, I think he's got a lot of passion for it, but he just needs some support. And I always like to support where I can. So Devin came along and then we're like, Hey, let's just fold you on in and let's get you part of this team. And, and so then Devin's been around and, and helping and been a thorough part of the team for a couple of years now. And then on Hayden's side, um, Hayden went to Purdue. And what I do at Purdue is there's a car club called Papa. And, and occasionally I'll go to Papa and be like, Hey, I need some, you know, people who want to learn, want some interns. I'll pay you guys if you want to come out and help with some race cars and do some stuff. And Hayden was one of those people. And so he nice. was able to stick around and deal with my yelling about everything and anything. <laughs> and, uh, learning learning some things along the way and there you go so Very and then cool. he got it and now he works for pwr so if you need some really good you know heat exchangers he's your man nice i know where they're built we have <laughs> we have we've learned actually about pwr cores a little bit uh yeah in the course of trying to solve a problem on our car in fact gotcha well so. he's he's your dude so like that nice. i mean that just that's what i tried to do when i was at purdue i tried to you know intern people i try to get them placed in motorsports positions so that's just another side thing but i was you know if you're interested in motorsports and stuff and and you can help i've got an intern right now who's interested and it helps people get jobs in this community so cool yeah, that's awesome it gives gives people that have the interest and outlet to really explore it and then right. like build up some chops and 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 possibly make it into a career yeah, and, they, and, and Hayden comes out and, he, you know, he came out to the track with us, met a bunch of people. And so then he's – now he's meeting these people in the community who he wouldn't have probably met otherwise because he's, oh, no. he's got an in with us. And now he's got this, you know, his, this, this rapport and it's easier to find a job. They trust you because you've worked with somebody who has a reputation for being reputable for some reason. And, yeah, <laughs> move on from there. Very cool. Well, that's, that's brilliant. Yeah, and coming from an engineering background, I mean, there's obviously so much to do with engineering – with a car yeah. and yeah. and one of the things I, I did want to just kind of talk to you guys a little bit about is the consulting that you do because like that that is, i mean just kind of as you said that that is one of your main focuses for professional awesome but i i really looked at that that's something that you don't really see offered very often um, if anything like the closest to that that you would see is is like if you find a shop that you want to work with then, then you bring your car to the shop, and then now you're kind of working with that shop to help build the car. But I wouldn't say it's, it's as much of a consulting relationship necessarily. Right. And what, I really, what really intrigues me about it is that it's, there, there's such a DIY mentality with people that are coming up and building a race car. You know, it's kind of like what you said with DIY Arrow. You're, you're trying to do it all yourself. You're trying to figure it out yourself. And, and sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And, and man, like just to be able to tap into you guys as a resource or, or basically you guys are offering up your experience as a resource to, you know, work with somebody and say like, well, we've tried these five different things or based on what you're doing, you should maybe look at doing this. That's, that's something that's very cool that you guys even thought to even offer that up and, and kind of put that into what you guys do. Yeah, we, we appreciate that. And, and I know there's resources out there that offer, you know, just aero consulting in general, but obviously you get to it. The, the, the bar to be 
involved with companies like that is pretty high, right? Yep. The, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people will do base level CFD as a start. And, and, and frankly, if I'm honest, it's completely unnecessary for 99% of the people who are delving into Aero. And that's the thing. So people, people assume it's necessary and it is 100% not because they don't understand all the, the things. We talked about it kind of on our CFD episode. So if you haven't listened to that, that's a great one, but how complicated that process is. Yeah. And, and even then, that's just an output that you now have to do something with. And so it's, a, right. it's so long. It's such a big process and it's completely unnecessary. So we started offering, you know, the first thing I, I, I tried to offer was what I called an arrow summary. And what you do is you send us pictures of your car, you send us pertinent details, and I'll turn around and I'll do, I'll basically we'll write a, a, a document that's generally 10 to 15 pages with pictures and information on what we really think is the best path forward for your car. There'll be slight little designs in there, nothing like, you know, CAD prints or anything. We can do that as well. But, um, but yeah, just, just help you improve like little key touches. And honestly, if you do those improvements, you're going to pick up quite a bit of time. And, and that's not even an expensive service. It depends on the car. It depends on what you're trying to do. It depends how, you know, how, how um, involved you want to be in that build. But that's not an expensive service. And it's not unheard of to pull two or three seconds out of just an aero summary package. And it's, sure. it's $500 to $1,000, depending on what it is. And so it's like, we're, we're good at that. We've been through this. And it's a great, and I, I, you know, another good example is um, Ben Thorne's car in track TR um, for grid life. Now, you know, he's going out, he's running some great times. He's ben doing Thorne quite well. From Gears and Gasoline. Gears and Gasoline. Welcome. Sorry. Um, but he's got, a, he's got a civic in track TR and, uh, and he's running, he's running great times. And a good example of that is that we didn't even do anything crazy with that car. We just did some simple engineering consulting in terms of the suspension. Dan did a, all that work while we were over there. And then we built a splitter that was very simple, but was built the way we like it to be built. And then he goes out and he runs very impressive times. And people are like, what, what's happening? Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this looks so simple. And it's like, visually, like it's hard for people to understand that visually just looking at a car or looking at a list of parts doesn't tell you nearly enough to know what, how that car was built. And Mm -hmm. I think that's a hard thing for people to get over, but it's how you use those parts. That's really important. When you, when you, when you start with, sorry, go ahead, Dan. um, It's funny that on the consulting side, um, I find that it's uh, people struggle to understand how easy some things can be when you just do a little bit of math. Um, And so, so somebody will come in and they'll have, you know, seemingly a complex request and we simplify things down for them. And, um, and it's like, yeah, well, your spring rates are all out of whack. Your aero balance is completely off. If, if you just tweak the spring rates a little bit, you just tweak, you know, your aero bounce a little bit, different wing here, and, you know, change the splitter or whatever. Um, you know, get rid of the canards because they're not aerodynamically efficient at all, which is the hardest thing for people to give up is their canards. Love um, them canards. Right. Oh my they, God. They, they look cool. cool. <laughs> they, do. They, do. they look cool, yeah. It, <laughs> and it's like you strip things back down, all of a sudden – everything just starts working and yeah, it wakes up the car and it it's like mind-blowing the, the, so a lot of the things that are difficult in the um, consulting are convincing people to follow the path that you're you're showing you're laying out there for them right and and, and people want to people want to buy parts dear lord which is great you know it helps help sell you know some of our stuff which i appreciate but they're like oh you know i need this roll center kit i need this you know, this um, roll bar, I need this, I need this. It's like, hold on. Like, well, you're spending your money. Do you even know how much faster that's going to make you? Like a, a roll center kit, great. You know, is that worth maybe, you know, a, a ten thousandth of a second? You know, I, it's, it's, it's probably not. Yeah, is it designed well? Is it, is it actually designed, doing is something? It safe? Right. Yeah. Right. Do you know, and, yeah. Do you know so anything about the of, suspension geometry? Like, right. yeah. A lot of our consulting is like, Let's take it back to the basics of what we can measure, what what you know, what is um, what is right in front of us, and then let's work within those boundaries. And as those get optimized and maximized, then we can expand out from there. And that it's it's really like a, a tough thing for for people to want to do because uh, it's like spending money means you go faster. Well, no, it doesn't necessarily. You know, spending money smartly can, but it's just the efficiency thing. Like we talked about earlier, you know, you, you let's, let's put our time, effort, money 
energy into the things that will make you faster as quickly as possible rather than just, you know, throwing something at the wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah. And it's, it, that's what we, whatever, whenever we get the opportunity to talk to somebody and kind of talk through what they're doing with the car, you know, we, we definitely try and do the same thing and, and bring, you know, whatever our experience can lend to what, what they're doing. But like what you guys offer, especially with, with the background that you have and the success that you've had, that's, I mean, that can save years off the development of a car because, yes. you know, once you, once you start getting into like tweaking suspension, especially tweaking arrow, that's, that's something that it's, it's, it's so hard to know where to start, you know, how to make the change and then how to measure, like, did you actually make a, an improvement? Is it actually, is the car actually now worse than it was before? And if you, if you're just coming into it blind, it's, it's such a hard, some of those arrow like suspension and arrow are such hard areas to really measure if you don't have a lot of tools if you don't have a lot of expertise how how much you're how much you're moving the needle in in one direction or the other so that or to be able to work with somebody that can kind of give you an an indicator or, or tell you if you're moving in the right direction or not that's that's uh that's that's a massive help and that's one of those things too like with driving and we talk about seat time all the time you have people who want to spend all this money and spend all this stuff up front before they even know what it is that they actually need or what it is that they actually want or what the feel is or any of that stuff. And sure, you could put somebody in like a proper bell car, which I've been lucky enough to be in lately, um, and then go and drive it. And I'm like, oh, this is sick. This is awesome, you know. But a lot of people are starting from the idea that they want to have this world time attack monster and have no experience behind the wheel of that car or any car and don't know what it is that they want or need or, or even how to even quantify the changes they're making to the car. If they're actually even appropriate or good changes, you know, like how many guys who have never had the slicks thing is always the thing that gets me. People have like just street cars you always see and they're running decent times and they're on, you know, they're on 200 treadmill tires and like, man, just how much faster would I've been on slicks? I'm like, I, you might not go any faster, like, cause it's everything gets, <laughs> everything gets impacted by all these things. Right. If you've never driven on slicks, you're used to tires that make noise. You're used to your suspension compression the way it is now. Like it's the same thing there. Oh, I'm going to put a big old wing on my car. I'm like, you don't even know, you know? Yeah, um, no, I'm, I'm with you on that. And I have two things like to, to compound on all the things you guys have been saying. It's like, we always say it's not magic. It's math right? Yeah. Like, that's why we say it like that. The hashtag, it's not magic, it's math, because like, I like math. And mm -hmm. I like to do maths. And that's fine. You don't have to do it. That's why you pay us to do it. Dan likes to do math. Now. It's weird, because he didn't like to before, <laughs> but he likes math. It's converted. And, uh, yeah. Yes, he has converted to, to the to this holy place. But it's um the other side of it is that, um like Dan was saying, and I think a good way to explain it is that we take a fuzzy picture and we make it clear. And that's what we're good at is that you don't even know what you're looking at. It's like a Rorschach painting when you really should be looking at, you know, something that's a photograph and it's incredibly clear. And we're really good at taking that mess of an image and giving you something and telling you what it's actually supposed to be. And then you start seeing it and you're like, wow, this makes a lot more sense. And, and that, that convincing that, you know, you need to take some things off or some things aren't working because, you know, the rest of the community is telling you these are super important things to have. And we're like, no, they're not. Right. Yeah. And, and that's the hard part. And so right. we're good at, we're good at making that clear and, and trying to, you know, bring everything into focus so that we can save you money. We can save you time. You know, like I said, John, say it louder for the people in the back. We can save years of your yeah. wasted time mm -hmm. because we've already wasted those years. Let mm -hmm. us enjoy those wasted years on our own. And then you guys can speed up your development. And that's, like I said, that's what we do for a lot of our partners, right? That's what we, you know, do for Sean Kresbach. That's what we do for Ben Thorne. That's what we do for, you know, basically all of the people we partner with is just push them forward so that they don't have to waste their own time. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. I mean, yeah, when you frame it that it's just, it, it makes sense. It's, it's a, it's a brilliant resource and it, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome what you guys are doing. It's exciting. I appreciate that. I, I wanted to ask just kind of to round out that out. How important is, is you're starting to look at kind of coming up with a, with a development plan for a car? How important is it to look at the whole aspect of the car? Like you mentioned, like just doing like an, an aero assessment of the car, but is it, how important is it to look at how much power the car is making, the suspension setup of the car and the aero, and look at all of those different aspects as you're going to kind of start to put that plan together? Well, I'll, I'll start by saying that 
every time we look at a car, we look at as much of it as we can. We never, we never ever just take something as a, you know, a single part of the system and then make recommendations alone on that. We always look for all the details that we can get um, on that vehicle because it is a system. And that's what makes yeah. our, you know, that's what makes our cars fast is that we, we properly specify the system to work together instead of individual components, you know, working separately towards a goal that, that might not sync up. So a great sure. example of that is someone who makes a lot of power, but has no brakes, right? Mm-hmm. Or a really, a really, you know, a really nice suspension on really bad tires, right? All these things don't, match up you can't do that those are exaggerated versions of it but you have to take a holistic approach that's I, why i wouldn't say it's exaggerated though i mean that's that's, that's so many accurate. that's so much what people like sure. they pick one thing and they put all of their energy in one aspect like engine right. or i'm gonna i'm gonna put on these five thousand dollar coilovers on, right. i'm still running stock wheels and you know yeah. all season tires but i've got a six thousand dollar set of coilovers and, and that happens, and, and that's true. I'm not saying that's not true, but, you know, it, it, it's just that people don't view it as such, right? People don't view it as, you know, I'm making 500 horsepower on stock brakes. They don't view it as that bad, but it is that bad. You're right. And, and that's, the, that's, that's the hard part, but looking at it as a holistic view on what the car is expected to do and what you'd like to do, um, I think is, is very important in terms of how do you start that process and what are you looking for? Well, that's a very dependent question on what your goals are, right? Sure. If you're, if you're looking to be the head of the class, set records, all that fun stuff, well, a lot of times you're going to be shoehorned into something that is the couple best vehicles that meet the class requirements that can really mm-hmm. take advantage of the rules, right? That's what you're looking to do. It's yeah. all about rules mm-hmm. and figuring out how to take advantage of them. And so that's where it starts if you're trying to you know, be a class beater um, and a record breaker. But if you're not, well, I always, I mean, just advocate for finding something that you like and have fun with it. Because if that's your goal, that's, that's not, that's not any worse or better than the other goals, but, and, and it's just as reasonable. But the thing is that you have to understand that maybe the car that you're bringing to that class, maybe isn't the best cl- car for that class. If you're, if you're trying to set records and that's, and it is what it is. It sucks, but that's how every class works for the history of band. So it is what it is, but just be reasonable yeah, with your it- goals. That that's something we uh, we find out with Subarus a lot. I mean, we've been, I've been really bitching about the the BMWs lately. Uh, they're trying to chase after lap records, and it just the lap record was set by a BMW, and I'm trying to chase it down in my Subaru with all my penalties, and I'm doing every damn thing I can, and I don't know if I'm ever going to get there. I'm still going to try because it sure yeah. is fun, but mm-hmm. it's definitely not the best platform out there for setting these records and that's hard and and that and that's fine and you know what i mean like you're you're doing you can and 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 the possibility of you getting the car developed enough to be able to do that um against the car that fundamentally has more um you know has an advantage in the in the rule set it it is what it is but you at least you know that right at least you're aware of that fact some people aren't even aware that they're using a car that isn't (laughs) isn't the right choice if you will and they're like no no we can definitely make it fast enough and it's like hmm well, this is going to take a while. You know what I mean? That's, like, this is going to be hard. That's part enough. of the fun, though, is when you, when is. you actually when you, when you get a glimpse, when you, when you try something and it actually works, and all of a sudden, like, like Scotty, Scotty's car, has, he's dropped seconds you know, pretty, for, pretty much for the last couple of seasons. Like, he's, he's getting close to that, that end goal. Like, it, sure. before, initially, it was like it was seven seconds a lap off, it's like that. That seems like this massive gap that it's impossible to make up, and it's it's coming down. Yeah, and and, and that, and it's not to say that you know, it's not to say that you shouldn't try. Like I said, if that's your goals, those are your goals. You keep trying, but yeah. you have to have it in your mind that it's going to be a harder path than if you have a BMW that's capable of doing it with within the rule set a little easier. Yeah, but, yeah. I, mean, I could very easily sell this thing and get something and and go out and and get it. Play. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. it's not going to happen. That's right. It's definitely and, not going to happen. And there you go. And that's the choice, right? And that's the choice you're making. And you're well aware of it. But there's some people who aren't aware of that. And that's, right. that's really what I'm saying is that when you start looking at a car, when you start building a car for a class, when you start building a car that you already have, you need to take a holistic approach at what you're trying to do and, and be reasonable about its intended performance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, so, so Mike, you, you just said, you said records and, and shooting for records and, and the other guys on the podcast, I just want to ask, I think we're about 45 minutes in. Is that a new record for him not saying records? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's pretty close. Well, it's close. 
Granted, he didn't, he didn't say uh, everything else doesn't matter yet. So okay, I mean everything <laughs> doesn't matter. But <laughs> there we go. Now, <laughs> now we're now we're at a record high. Now. Yeah, now we're yes. good. Now okay. we're good. Well, and, and actually, I do want to ask you guys about records. I know it's kind of like a hot oh, button boy. topic, but so we're we're in Colorado, and and uh, like we were talking about at the beginning. So Ryan. Uh, Dussex here is organizing the NASA time trials and SCCI time trials groups in, in the Colorado region. And, and we've started talking about records uh, in, in, in this area in, a, in our local tracks because one of, the, one of the things we're talking about with records is kind of what you, you guys have alluded to or you've talked about a lot on your podcast is how that is really a, a goal to shoot for. And, and I think it's fairly safe to say that you guys are really obsessed with records and, and setting a record. And that is a big priority. Well, I and am Devin, Devin, yeah. me and Mike are opposites. We're right. not a okay. monolith. <laughs> yeah. We are, we're not a monolith in this case. We, we Devin has, has divorced himself from this opinion. <laughs> <laughs> not, not divorce. I, I would just say that uh, I'm not as uh, colorful in my admiration for records as Mike is. Sure. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Well, and, and <laughs> so one of the things we're talking about, because there, there really aren't clearly established records for a lot of the classes. I mean, there, there, are, there are numbers out there, but there's not really, sure. like, it, it, it's, there's, it's not on message boards. It's not really discussed a lot. I mean, we're kind of wanting to, like, try and, and start really getting some more attention to records, just to kind of light a fire under some people to maybe see if that'll get some more people out to the track, get some more people to participate, get people that are participating something to really shoot for. But I wanted to see you know, what you guys would, would talk about what the difference is between if you're, if you're going out to an event and you're shooting for a record versus shooting to get a class win or something like that. Like just, just from a mindset and from a build standpoint, per, perhaps. Yeah. It's, it's hard because I don't think we've ever been to an event where we weren't there to set a record. Like right. no matter the situation, no matter what, like if it rains, right, we're not going to set a record in the rain, but we're going to, if it seems like there's going to be some dry spots on the track, we're still going to try. So it's not to say that, you know, like I can, I can understand people's points like, oh, well, if the conditions aren't perfect, you're not going to set that record. And that is absolutely true. That is possible. But we haven't found for the most part that we've been, you know, multiple seconds off of that possibility necessarily um, because of the conditions. The conditions might stop us from getting close to it or even breaking it. We maybe I, I can think of plenty of times where we probably would have broken a record if the conditions had been better. Hmm. But if you're not going for it anyway, then, you know, if you, this is your opportunity, the thing about time attack. So I, I realized after our last podcast, I, there's a couple of things that I'd like to clarify that are really, I, I think are important in this whole scheme of things. So like some people sent me a message and said, oh, well, time attack was never about records. It was about having fun, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, time attack started as setting records. It about, it is about track records. That's all it's about. Let's, let's handle that right now. That's what it's about. Now, the important Nothing thing else matters. Though, well, th I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but the in. thing is, <laughs> let me jump yeah. in real quick, Mike, just because I was thinking about the same thing after the podcast. When I grew up, I grew up reading Sport Compact Car, and I knew the records at Scuba before I knew how to drive. Yeah, and, exactly. And that it that's that weird. Is the beginning of Time Attack is right, that's Scuba the mindset. Yeah, and and so um, I think in. If we look back, you know, to the earliest days of Time Attack, it was that track and setting right. the fastest possible time, the first person under one minute, the first front wheel drive under a minute, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right. et cetera, et cetera all the way down. So yep. um, that's my thought on Time Attack is based on records. Go on with the rest of whatever the hell you were going to say. Yeah. Well, and, and if, so if you're not having fun doing it, then what's the point? Yeah. And, so and, and, it, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. I mean, you're out there to set records. That's why you go. That's why we have time attack yeah. cars. But if you're not having fun, what's the point? If it's right. super stressful, then, then go do something else. <laughs> right. And, and the thing is, we, 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 and the, you know, when we started off early, we were, we pounded hard. We, you know, we, we blew up a car on Thursday night, blew up a car on Friday night and get there on Saturday. We, we did that. We literally did that for an event at Autobahn. We blew up a transmission, then we blew up an engine and we got there. Anyway, it's like you, you, you hustle and, and we've slowed down since then. Absolutely. We've slowed down. And the reason we slow down is because of, you know, the costs involved and all those things. Like it's harder, you know, being more high strung, there's more risk, right? It's the whole thing we talked about, you know, before we started recording is that, that once you get to these high strung levels, like the cost involved and the, the consumables and all those things, we've kind of hit that inflection point where 
we are one of the more affordable unlimited cars, but in the whole scheme of things, it's still an expensive weekend. It's still an expensive uh, thing to get out there and do. So, so we, we have hit that inflection point. But in terms of the records, what I was thinking about is that one, re- you know, Time Attack's been about records forever. That's what it was. But, but I think that one of these things that happened that is um, – important to note that I don't think we talked about otherwise people talk about these conditions and how if the conditions are bad people won't go for records or if um, you know you don't have fast people out there for the for the events and I think that is that is very much American time attack and I think you know putting it into that perspective that's that's where the kind of disconnect is and I realized it after the fact when we were talking about it because time attack at Tsukuba is about going whenever you want and setting a record it's much like drag racing the event is not as important as being at the track and filming it. And so people go to Sakuba all the time that have nothing to do with a, 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 an event and just run the track and time it and they set a record. And that was the competition. And, but in the United States, there's events. And so people talk about individual sanctioning bodies. And, you know, we, we had a messages, you know, on, on Facebook and said they talk about individual sanctioning bodies. They talk about different times and stuff like that. And realistically, those are great points because if we go out to California, reasonably, we're not going to be back for another year. And because mm-hmm. of that, we're going to try real hard. And we have blown up two motors in a weekend trying really hard. Ooh, not to mention the fires. Not to mention the fires in between those motors. And that's the thing, we, because, because we, were, we knew we wouldn't be back for a year. So that trip cost so much and is so much effort that we needed to put as much effort in as we could while we were there. So we didn't sleep all weekend. We blew up two motors. And unfortunately, we just barely missed the record because we couldn't get around the last turn with a motor that was intact. <laughs> and so, right. yep. but, that, the, and, but if this was, if this was Sakuba. And if this was Japanese time attack, we, and if we lived closer or we didn't have jobs and we could hang out there, we could have just waited three days, gone three days later with a car that was complete and ready to go and then tried to set a record then. And that would have been very much Japanese time attack. And I think that is the fundamental disconnect because people worry about the track conditions. People worry about the events. And, and there's been a lot of discussion about does, do, does a record need to happen at an event or can it happen, um, you know, away from the event? And the thing about time attack in, in Japan, you know, the people worried about in the United States is the rule set because the rule set are different between different organizations. And that's completely true. And, and that's the hard part is that we have the rule sets that are different. Japan doesn't necessarily have those aggressive rule sets. And if they do, they do have some. And if they do have them, people just abide by a singular rule set. And that's not exactly the same as... You, you do in the United States. So I think those are the two big differentiators. Well, we, we've I actually that, talked about whether it have, has to be in competition or not. And I think right. we've kind of landed on if, it, if it's a time, if it's a record set in competition, it, the, the record has to be broken in competition. And there's a couple of reasons, I mean, behind that mindset. One of them, first and foremost, is transponders. You know, it's not like you take your transponder with you on an open lapping day at XYZ track and they're running the timing loop and you get like a legitimate official thing. So then it's like, well, what was your transponder or what were you using for timing? Yeah. Or was it aim? Was it this? And then the other part of it too is like, and I'll use my own personal driving as an example at, uh, at uh, SCCA time trials a couple of years ago, I had two runs. and One was an official timed run and one wasn't because my faster run where I did two tires off was in a spot where that sanctioning body said, you can't do that. Whereas the lap that was my official fastest run, which is eight tenths slower, was with those two wheels on. And that was that limit. So I could always say like, oh, I ran a 213, blah, 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 at NCM. But the official recognized that that sanctioning body sets those limitations that people have to abide by sure. in order for it to be a record. Because, I mean, fuck, I mean, when we were kids, when we were playing Gran Turismo, with the 2,000 horsepower SQ, yeah, just run them into the end, run, run to the yeah, wall, yeah, run yeah. Wall. Right. you just fucking <laughs> ramp that wall. Anything else. Yep. Easy, exactly. Yep. Yeah, and so, and it, and yeah. Go ahead. Well, I, and so I yeah, I mean, I feel like that's that's like with those sanctioning bodies and stuff, and your top tip, you're like your pointy end of the stick, you know, your fastest cars, the unlimited cars are unlimited cars. You're just trying not to get yourself killed. You know, for the most part, but I mean, I mean, I seriously, and you know, when you look at that from that perspective, then the rules are pretty much the same with the exception of tire limitations possibly, but it's those, those rules that say this is what's good. And this was, isn't good is kind of the limit that I try to use, you know? Yep. No. And and I, and I can understand some of that. I've got a quick question, right? So the 
do the Australians have the same mindset as the Japanese, or is it like whatever is set around that track doesn't count unless it's a world time attack? Okay, well, it sounds like we should ask somebody in. I don't actually know. I think it's oh, okay. world time attack. The, um, the one thing I was thinking too, um, this this debate versus podium versus um, lap record um, only really applies in American time attack to mm-hmm. unlimited class right. because the the underclasses are so competitive that if you aren't happens. if you aren't it trying for that, that generally set a record anyway yeah and so yeah. the the debate is a little bit flawed because yeah. the no, competition sure. isn't there at the at the pointy end of the stick um so so that kind of that sucks and is depressing and so if you talk about australia you know there's always a full class in every single class so the rest of the still weekend. Can, yeah, at the start yeah. of the yeah, weekend. Yeah, before they all blow up. Fair enough. Yeah, so the record is is probably going to be their priority because it's also the record also means a podium and vice versa. So uh, I mean, I guess you guys convinced me that I might come around after all. Well, no, don't I want to. I want to kind of split, maybe split the middle and say that I what what I really like about the record or, or a record is that it's it can be such a motiv- motivator. It can be such a pinnacle that you're just shooting for. And and saying that it has to be in competition, that's what breaks it up to like sure. You know, once once a year. It it rarifies the event. It it minimizes yeah. your chances to get it. So that you've got such a higher priority to 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 put forth maximum effort on the one shot that you've got right. to hit that record. And that's what world, yeah, world time attack goes for that kind of thought mm-hmm. process, right? Well, and what I, so yeah. what I'm thinking about here is our experience at Pikes Peak. You know, you, the yeah. road is only open once a year, and like this year, it snowed, like yeah, before that overnight, six inches of snow at the summit, and everybody got a two-thirds run. So right. nobody set a record. You 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 work for a whole year. Nobody's going to set a record. Nobody mm-hmm. nobody gets to set a time, and and now all you can do is look for next year, and and yep. and it's so yeah. so like that time like. There was a uh, Robin shoot did a time of two thirds of the mountain, right up to devil's playground of five minutes and 55 seconds. Ridiculous. That every, everything worked for that car that day, but he has no idea what he would have run. There's, there's right. not even an asterisk at, at the time. He's, if he wants to really set something, he's got to come back and do it next again. year. Yeah. If, if, if all the stars align again in the same way, yeah. but <laughs> like for, for the competition part of it is because nobody set a record. Now you're still, can I, can I, can I get first in class? Can I get podium in the class? Yeah. That's the fun part of it. Yeah. So that's where you can enjoy yeah. the weekend. But the challenge is like, man, can I, can I set this record? Can I take yeah. advantage of this opportunity to really like make a mark? Yeah. I mean, I got, I got a question for the pro, the pro awesome guys too. I mean, when you guys, I'm not saying you guys, I don't know if you guys sponsor cars or not or whatever, but, um, but like, I was thinking about that whole, the Bentley run, like with Reese Millen and they brought yeah. two cars out here and like six engines and they yeah, ran all faster. these different fuel things and yeah, mm-hmm. faster, you know, it made me think like you have all these obligations for like a company, like with sponsorships and relationships and all this other stuff. When that happens, something that's out of control, like it rains at, you know, a super lap yeah. or, you know, with it's snow at the top of the mountain, like how do, how do, how do you like, how do those relationships even work? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I just feel like I mean, for Bentley to go back and try and do it again, it's, you're taking a stab at it every single time on the chance that you could, that could happen, you know? Yeah. I'll, I'll start and then I'm gonna let Devin take over, but oh boy. Um, yeah, but I'll say that, that, we talked about motorsport sponsorships before and we, so we start, this is just me. I generally gravitate towards the people who are passionate and want to win and set records. Um, that's just who I gravitate towards. Cause I like working with those people. Um, they'll generally listen because they know that if they listen, they'll go faster, which is easier to much easier to deal with. Now there might be more play by going after somebody who's got more followers and all that stuff. And, and we, we, we work with some of those people as well. Um, but the primary is, is being willing to listen. Secondly, um, motorsport sponsorship is not necessarily about the event. It's about everything else. And so that's Mm -hmm. a big thing that people mistake is that, yes, we try to win. We try to get records. And I'm sure that some of those partners really wanted a record, right? Roger Clark wanted a record, Mm -hmm. right? That's why they helped Mm -hmm. with the car, right? I guarantee it. Um, But 
everybody knows, and especially if you have good partners, they're in this. This is their world. They understand that feeling. They understand that there's limitations and you only do what you can do. You have to entrust in the people that you're working with that they're doing everything that they can do in a reasonable fashion that to make it to the events, to do as everything they can at the events to do well. So it's important to, to keep that distinction. But on the other side of it is the play that Faster got out of that car, that Roger Clark got out of that car, that Bentley got mm -hmm. out of that car in terms of the media blitz beforehand. I mean, there was two or three videos that they, they ran, plus they have their own YouTube channel, plus the Roger Clark yeah. video, plus the, you know, Bentley's own video, plus, you know what I mean? The, the, you know, the social media is like going crazy over them. That was the thing that made it valuable, not necessarily the actual event. Now the event is important and it would have been a cherry. I say, yeah. Right, but it's not. You know what I mean? But it's that's, not. That's it's the not challenge. the challenge. And that's, that's the challenge. That's why having the rare, like the minimal number of attempts. That's why every one of them has weight. Yeah. No. And yeah. I, and I agree with that. And so, like Devin, Devin is our our resident sponsor guru, if you will. Um, and and he tries to tell people all the time. You know, there's there's plenty of times where you can't make it events. You can't do this. You can't do that. But like he his his articles like the articles that dan's writes all these things like you know the posts and all that it's keeping up with the partners and and making sure they're happy with the the outreach that you're doing and the promotion that you're doing otherwise it's important if you look at motorsport sponsorships in a in as a holistic approach most partners don't even care if mm -hmm. you've won an event it's your ability to connect with the audience yeah. And so for me, it's hard for me to agree <laughs> with that stance because I am such a record hunter. You are so um, polite. I'm so yeah, polite. Nice. You are nice on this podcast. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I can't be crazy. <laughs> Strangers, but, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what can I, what can I say? But it, 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 cause I'm such a record hunter, it's hard for me, but I do understand from a marketing perspective that that is important. And, and Devin does a great job of that. And that's why he's our, you know, resident guru in that regards. And then, it, and that's important. And so that's why that's, that's dichotomy. You want to add anything to that, Devin? No, no, you summed up everything. Like, no, see, he, doesn't, he doesn't listen to me either. So he, that, this tells me <laughs> that he hears what I say and just goes right out the window. He's like, go. yeah, stupid, not doing it. Yeah, no, it, it, it's hard. And, and, and your, your point about Pikes Peak, I 100% agree with. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think it's conflating some things like, you know, Pikes Peak is a different animal. You have more the possibility for something to go wrong at Pikes Peak is so massively high compared to ginger men. I mean, unless it's Midwest right. Fest, because then you're guaranteed to have a tornado. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's so, you know what I mean? That's a, that's a hard thing. You have to, you have to go all in. You have to give it your all, no matter what it is, no matter what it looks like, because that does matter that day, because the conditions that day are the, are the benchmark. And, yeah. and to a certain extent though, that is, that is, again, it's part of the challenge because you know that if you can get everything to line up and you get this amazing run and you can set that record, that, that even if you come back the next year, it might not line up and you might not be able to set that record. Yeah. And it probably nobody won't else line could. up. And yeah. then maybe, maybe that, that's, that's where your record sticks around for a long, long time. It's painful. And, then, and that's, that's kind of the lure of, or the allure of setting a record is you might actually be able to make your mark and have it stay there for a long time. Like the yeah, time attack record yeah. that Scotty's chasing, it, it's been, was it five or six years old, Scotty? Maybe older? 2015. Yeah. Six years. Yeah. We'll, have to talk, so, I mean, we'll have to talk to you about that after this. Well, I'd like to hear happen. more about it. Sure. So, I, I was thinking <laughs> of one thing too, and I, I don't know, I assume everyone else can relate to this, but maybe, again, maybe people – can't but 2013 road atlanta was the year that uh, i crashed um the first professional awesome evo um and and totaled the car and um at that point we were the fastest in the class we were first in class i think we had the record already mm -hmm. um you know though we could have backed out of it and put everything on the trailer early gone home there's nobody else that was going to catch us but you still push. You still keep going. We, yeah, we and, pushed. And, yeah. And I, I would assume, like, most competitors are that way. Like, yeah, you got the win yet, but, like, you, you, want, you want more. You want, you're greedy. You're, you know. Yeah, untouchable. And, you want to be untouchable. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. And, and maybe that's why Mike and I gravitate more towards those records and, and hold them in such high esteem. It's, it's also the, the one of the things. I, and I guess it makes perfect sense with in relation to that. It's not only having the record, it's maximizing your capabilities, your abilities, 
yeah. um, and mm -hmm. and fulfilling what you know is your potential. And that is so rare to happen. Um, so when you do achieve that or get close to achieving that, yeah. you know, you, you want that high again. So I think that those are the reasons why records are, you know, core to um, – to my life and actually I don't pay attention to much time attack unless somebody else is getting records and then all of a sudden I'm like oh I gotta look at this video I gotta see how they did it I gotta yeah. you know but if it's just a regular event you know it's like uh, I'm a little indifferent to it until um, I see like oh you know Will's going out you know James Hooten's going out oh I gotta mm -hmm. pay attention to these guys because the potential is there mm -hmm. and that, yeah, yeah I've kind of I... go ahead go ahead you. I kind of had this like this funny, silly thought the other day, and this is kind of watching Jackie Ding's runs lately with his Supras at the beginning of the year, like a Coda and stuff. I mean, they're absolutely decimating street, but it kind of had this thought, and and it's I think this is kind of where you guys might have been going to Road Atlanta in 2013. It's like, yeah, we might have broken the record now, but if we know that there's more on the table, we and we may never get a chance to do better because conditions, because a car, because the engine blew up, or because now we're running a motorcycle, whatever it may be, I see that, that there's that idea where sometimes, you, in Jackie's case, I'm not going to leave anything on the table. I'm going to push in every perfect session that I can to squeeze as much out of it as I can so that I can sit on top of this record for as long as it'll last. Or I've seen this in Will I Young, like in 2018, where at Grid Life, he set the front wheel drive record on the Friday or Thursday practice. He sat on it the whole weekend and no one broke it, but he still runs that car. He knows that car is going to be better. He gets the opportunity to, he knows what it's going to take to beat that record the next year or the next time he gets a shot at it. Sometimes I wonder if there's that mental game too, is like, okay, this is the publicity and the love and everything I'm going to get for smashing this now. And I know how I can smash it again instead of smashing it twice. Does that make sense? No, I mean, I think that comes up a lot, actually, that they, mm -hmm. there's a little banker in there, and then they might be able to go for a yeah. little bit more later. But I can tell you that when Dan said, meeting your potential, I got goosebumps. And every time somebody yeah. says that, I get goosebumps. Because for lack of a better reference, it is tracing that dragon. Well, and especially, uh, especially when you're, you're coming at it with a formula that is that is a little bit off of what everybody else is doing. Like kind of sure. you guys approach it being is, is as precise and efficient as possible to go as fast as possible. Or like with Scotty, he's, he's doing everything that he can with his Subaru to go and beat a BMW time that was set. Like what, how can you, mm -hmm. how can you reinvent the wheel? How can you utilize the platform that you have? Mm -hmm. and, and the proof of the concept is reaching that record and beating that record. That right. is, that mm -hmm. is the ultimate proof of concept. Yeah. And I can tell you that, I can tell you that we have rarely ever left a track where we had thought we had reached our potential. And, and we, we've mm -hmm. talked about this internally and, mm -hmm. and uh, of those days, because they are glorious days. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's only, there's only two or three of them out of all of our years. And the, the point being that, again, I got goosebumps because I mm -hmm. thought about it. And that's the point is that I know for me that I won't, if I feel at all comfortable, I will not try to leave something on the table. I, I am conservative for sure because I don't want to blow something up. But if I think the car has it and, I, and there's a reasonable chance that someone can go get it, they're going to go get it. And that's, yeah. that's it. And they're going to go and put it so far out of reach of everybody else that we can look at the limited record at Button Willow. We didn't need to do that. We had, we had the record at 46 or whatever, 44. Then we had the record at 42. We didn't even need to run that 42. Um, at Button Willow with a limited record. But guess what? It happened, and it was a good day. And I have goosebumps over that lap. You watch that lap on YouTube. It, Jeff, oh, God, my skin is like ridiculous. <laughs> that's, and that's, that's what it's about, right? It's, and it's that's like what I'm saying. Remembering it, getting there, hitting that point, and then, and, and yeah. then trying to get there, get there again. And everyone like, tries to come up with the reason why you were capable. They, everyone's like, oh, it was the tires, and it was this, and it was that. It's like, it wasn't anything. It wasn't any one thing. And even come now... Right. Yeah, it wasn't any one thing. It wasn't these little rule changes that all of a sudden made it obsolete, that now you can't beat it. That's, that has nothing to do with this. It's that putting a car together to go that fast is hard, and it just hasn't been done yet. And it shows that potential because now Street is running into 45s, right? Amir ran a 45 in, in Street, and it's like, uh, that's crazy. But it shows that, one, the tires are definitely not the limitation. And two, that 
it's the package that needs to be put together to make it possible. Yeah. Would you say that there's actually almost a Zen element to chasing a record in that way? Because you're, you're chasing that perfect lap, that, that perfect time, the maximum, the maximum potential of, of the driver in the car in that, in that lap. And if you're, if you're out there competing, like you, you can, you can still win, you can have fun, you can enjoy it. But you know, if you're, if you're always chasing that perfect event, like that's a way to push yourself, even if you're like, if you're winning in first place by, by 10 seconds in your class, but you know that that record is five seconds away, you're still going to continue to push, continue to drive and continue to improve because right. you're chasing this, this, this higher, higher goal than, than just winning. Yeah. Know, and, uh, go ahead. Uh, well, who's, who's oh, oh, too many people. Yeah. Let Definitely me jump in Definitely. here real quick. I know that um, I am in my head my entire life it, from the morning I wake up, I'm thinking about, <laughs> you know, 10 steps ahead, 10 steps behind all the different things I need to do, whatever, whatever. And so the moments when I can get out of my head and be solely in the moment uh, are mm. so enjoyable. And when there is that, you know, care in front of you that you're trying to achieve a certain goal um, and, you can devote your entire energy, your focus, you know, your whole mindset, everything else, you know, goes, you're not worried about your phone. You're not looking at, you know, your relationships. You're not worried about, you know, your mom being disappointed in you. You're not, you know, you're not worried about any of that shit. You're just worried about, I need to get to this point. What do I need to do to get there? Like, you know, that's Nirvana. Like that's, yep. You know, and, and, and if you achieve that, like, holy shit, you know, you walk around with an erection for the next week. So, um, yeah, that is. Oh, your doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doctor, priapism. It's a real yeah. thing. Um, but yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah. Getting, getting out of my own head uh, and being behind the wheel of a car um, when you're not like even thinking about like the setup, like, okay, is it understeering at this point? Is it, you know, um, you know, how's the throttle response? How's the engine feeling? How's it like you, all of that goes away and you're like apex break zone, apex breaking zone. That's pretty sweet. And I think that's probably why a lot of us do this, this crazy ass sport. And that's, you know, to the people that like, there, there's a, there's one guy that comes in that is, that is, he is a very successful wheel to wheel racer. And, and Scotty's obsessed with time attack and, and he'll just, he'll swing by, you know, every, every couple of weeks and just hang out. And it's, it's this kind of like battle of like, so, so you're going to try wheel to wheel. Nope. Are you going to try time attack? Nope. But, but the people that get time attack, I, I think it's, 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 it's understanding that goal. And, and to a certain extent, I think building a car for time attack to set a record, it gives you a clarity of purpose yeah. because the, the choices that you're making, it's not like, is this going to help me win? Because that's, that's a harder goal to hit that's a little bit more nebulous. But is this, is this change going to make the car as fast as it possibly can? And, right. and Devin, I'm going to throw it to you because what I'm thinking about here is like you're, you're putting this dual clutch transmission in your S2000. That's, that's not the easiest thing to do. But I'm sure that it's because that's going to be a lot faster than any other option. And if you're, if you're going for like the fastest possible package, it gives you that clarity of purpose. Well, well, mainly because I'm poor, right? I can't afford a sequential, right? The DCT is, it's expensive, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's a fraction of the cost. Um, but I guess my, my thing is, um, so since meeting, meeting the pro out guys, I, I've taken the same type of philosophy building, just, I've always just wanted a, a fast SS2000, to be honest with you, right? And um, so I guess that's, we just had this conversation a couple of days ago where, I guess I do care about records. Like I've always wanted to be the fastest S two thousand, regardless of class, right? Even if, but I want to do it in track my limited trip. But anyway, um, yeah. Shut up. All right. Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 yeah. It's how you define your goals, and there's different goals in right. different ways, and it's just how you define your rule set. And you know, talking to Devin, I was mm -hmm. like, so you care about the records, you just care about not nece necessarily a particular rule set, but for a chassis, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. The Japanese love that kind of thing, right? They have the fastest front wheel drive, they have the fastest mm -hmm. Civics, they have the fastest S two thousands, the N NSXs. You know, pick your poison. They have the fastest 
they, they segregate themselves mm-hmm. into, into different groups, but they also compete as a holistic approach as well. And that's fine. It, it just matters on how you define your constraints. And for me, the box is what's important because I like, I, I think um, racing without rules, like Pikes Peak, I love, and especially when you have money, but racing without rules in terms of truly unlimited isn't as, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not going to say it's not an engineering challenge. It's absolutely an engineering challenge. It's also a budgetary challenge, but in terms of limited budget and racing within rules, you have to get creative. And that creativity is what racing is born on. And I really like that yeah. box. I like that creativity mm-hmm. limit. Like you, the creativity has to be maximized to, to, to deal with the fact that, that your box is so limited. And that's something that really pushes me um, as well. And then the other thing I was going to say to Dan's point earlier is that um, it's funny. So Dan will fully admit that he doesn't necessarily like doing things that are overly difficult because doing difficult things doesn't necessarily give him a lot of pride um, in doing it. He just doesn't like it. But in terms of time attack, it's completely different for some reason. And I, and I find that very interesting. He is willing to do the hard things to get the time attack. I, I mean, he tries to make it easier, obviously, but it's interesting. It's, I think it, there's the split between people willing to put in the time and effort to do the engineering and otherwise to get there versus the people who want to show up and just beat who's ever around. And, I want to beat everybody that ever existed and you want to beat everybody on that day. And that's just a different thing. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, I don't care who was there. Tom Brady was there. I want to go faster than Tom Brady. Right. <laughs> so there you go. Um, you, you were talking to uh, John was talking about um, purpose. And I remember um, when we first started doing time attack, um, Nick, and I'm not going to be able to pronounce his last name, but uh, Nick M managed uh, Redline time attack and that, then that gave away to Global Time Attack and it was taken over, um, or J- uh, Jason Deanhart and um, John Adairi, um started that up with Chris Rado. And I remember like after a uh, Button Willow event or at, like going up and t- talking with Jason Deanhart and being like, thank you for giving my life purpose. And you and said I, that. I'm, I and there. I'm serious because it's like, yeah, you know, I, in my life, what the hell do I do? Is my purpose to make money and retire? Is it, you know, to have a healthy relationship? Is it, you know, whatever. It's like, like that, all that stuff, um, the challenge is not as great to me, at least in my head, as making a time attack car survive around button willow for some reason. And so that's where you can devote your time and energy um, to make life enjoyable and to, and to challenge yourself. And I, I mean, I swear dude. like, I, if, if Jason hears this or next time I see him, like at that point, like getting up in the morning, you know, like you go to work or whatever. Well, I go to work to make money so I can afford to do time attack. I go to work so I can have my evenings free so I can work on time attack stuff with my buddies. I go to work, you know, it, you do everything revolves around, um finding that purpose in life and for me that was time attack and still is you know it's i'm I'm married now i have a lovely wife and all that garbage um but i I remember telling her like the the first day i met her like like you know you will come secondary to cars an awful hell a lot of the time and if you're not okay with that that's totally cool but i'm telling you right now like pull out and she's like and she's an equestrian. She's big into jumping horses, riding horses, stuff like that. She's like, well, you are not nearly as important as a horse in my life. So as long as we're cool in that regard, I'm like, hell yeah, dude, go ride your horses. I don't That's, care. Go. That is that is rare for that to actually work out. So, yeah, no, so yes, you, you, you chose well. Yeah. And she chose poorly. So it was like the perfect mix. <laughs> there you go. But yeah. It, yeah. If it's a mindset. I think willing to go after it at all costs, regardless of who's around and the conditions, it's just a mindset. Yeah. Well, guys, we, we've taken up a lot of your time and I know that uh, some of you guys are on the East coast, so it's getting pretty late. So I do not want to keep you any more uh, than, than we have to here. So um, I guess, unless, unless there's anything else that anybody wanted to say about records, do I, do I even say that? <laughs> mm-hmm. no. The only thing that matters. The only thing no, that matters. Boy. Yes. <laughs> Hashtag. Well, I just want to thank you guys very much for, for being open to sit down with us and have this conversation with us. It was, it was fantastic. And uh, man, yeah, well, I'm sure we'll be in touch here again soon. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty much all I got to say.
Thanks for, thanks for letting me get existential. Yes. Oh yeah, heck yeah. No, <laughs> I, I appreciate it, guys. And, and yeah, we definitely want to talk, definitely want to work together in the future. And, and uh, we'll, we'll reach out or you reach out to us and we'll, we'll get some, some things going. Brilliant. Heck yeah. Yeah. We're excited about it. Yes, yeah, sounds perfect. Well, thank you so much, guys. Thanks, thanks, for, uh, thanks for chatting with us. And to everybody that's listened to the end, thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, until next time, stay tuned with Flatirons Tuning. All right, we'll see you guys. Bye now. <laughs>